Thank you very much, uh, Board Chair Reader, and thanks to BCIT for this very special honor. It is just a, a wonderful thing to be here today uh, and join you. But most importantly, I am honored to share this day with all of you who have earned your degrees through much hard work and many sleepless nights, right? Through talent you may not have imagined that you had. School of Energy, you made a very wise choice. If there's one word we all hear more than anything else, it's energy. Energy transition, energy security, energy, energy, energy. So you have chosen very wisely. And let me say a great congratulations to all of you again. Graduates, the young ones in the crowd, you have no idea how relieved your parents are today. <laughs> this would be a good time to ask for money. <laughs> Speaking at convocation is daunting. As we walked out of my daughter's convocation a few years ago, I asked her, so what did you think of the convocation speech? Oh, the speech, she deadpanned, I don't remember a word. So now I know. If you remember one word of anything that I say by tomorrow, I would have hit a home run. So perhaps I should keep it brief. I'm an engineer. Engineers are not known for great oratory or lengthy speeches. When Orville and Wilbur Wright, pioneers of the first flying machine, were invited to dinner to celebrate their success, the host of the evening invited Orville to say a few words. Orville stood up and said, Wilbur will speak. <laughs> Wilbur then took the podium and said, Orville just did, and sat down. <laughs> Maybe you'll remember that tomorrow when you're invited to speak. But I'm going to leave with you one message. Be excellent. Excellence has underpinned my own journey as an engineer and an educator. And let me tell you a brief story of how the seeds of excellence were planted in my own life. The story begins in Elora, Ontario, the birthplace of a remarkable Canadian woman by the name of Mary Irvin. She was one of the first female doctors to graduate from Toronto Medical College uh, in the mid-1890s. She couldn't work in Canada, so she traveled to New York, met and married Samuel Ratnam, who was a missionary from Sri Lanka, my birthplace. And she went to Sri Lanka to be a missionary. The Sri Lanka Ceylon that Mary encountered troubled her a great deal. Women had few rights, and, and only 3% of them could read. She founded numerous organizations to promote literacy for girls and led the charge for women's rights. Mary Irving's life and mine are linked in the most remarkable ways because she married my great-grand-uncle, Samuel Ratnam. Aunt May, as my father called her, had a profound influence on him since she changed the landscape for women in Sri Lanka. That came to light when I bravely announced to my parents as a teenager that I was going to be an engineer. They didn't say, are you crazy? Women don't do engineering. They encouraged me. So looking back, my sense of excellence has been shaped by the lives of individuals such as Mary Ratnam. I love the following quotation on excellence. Excellence can be attained if you risk more than others think is wise, is safe. Care more than others think is wise. Dream more than others think is practical. And expect more than others think is possible. In choosing a career in mechanical engineering, 
I certainly took a risk. There were no girls in my class, but plenty of dates. <laughs> it was risky to change fields and move into metallurgical engineering, but I so enjoyed the time I had studying materials. Taking risks is fundamental to achieving excellence. Without it, you cannot push boundaries. I think of Elsie McGill, the first Canadian female electrical engineer. She contracted polio and faced the prospect of spending her life in a wheelchair. She was not to be deterred. She threw herself into aeronautical engineering and helped Canada become a global leader in aircraft manufacturing during World War II. She was dubbed the Queen of the Hurricanes because of her contribution to the Hawker Hurricane aircraft. So the second path to excellence is to care more than others think is wise. I learned this firsthand from my father, who was a ear, nose, and throat surgeon who toiled away in a third world country caring for tens of thousands of extremely poor patients. When I was growing up, he discovered a mechanism that linked to migraine, responsible for debilitating headaches. And he devised a minor operation to help cure migraine. I remember his excitement and the passion with which he pursued this particular path. And I realized that his caring was dri his driving force for excellence. Excellence can only be achieved if you also dare to dream, wild dreams. This often has its birth in failure. I was a mediocre athlete in high school and remember coming in dead last in the 400 meters race. This is not like the 100 meter dash where no one notices that you were last. When you run a 400 meters list and I was still running long after everyone has crossed the finish line, that was embarrassing. I came home and I said, I quit. My parents said, if Wilma Rudolph can th win three Olympic gold medals, what is the matter with you? Don't you love it when your parents say the darndest things? Now, Wilma Rudolph was an African-American from Tennessee. She was born severely premature. She contracted polio and wore a brace until she was nine years old. The 20th of 22 children, her father was a railway porter and her mother was a maid. She overcame enormous odds, competed and won three gold medals in track and field in the 1960 Olympic Games in Rome. Imagine that. She was known throughout the world as the tornado fastest woman on earth. But more than that, she expected more from her community. So after she retired, she went on to become a civil rights activist. Wilma Rudolph not only dreamed more than others thought it practical, she expected more and became a civil rights activist. Although I never became a much better athlete, I did not quit. And her story has stayed with me to this day. Graduands, as you leave today, reflect on these high principles. Above all, risk more, care more, dream more, and expect more. And your reward will be extraordinary excellence that changes the world. Congratulations to all of you.